In this video, we're going to restrict access to an API endpoint using the role of a user, often referred to as role-based access control. You can see that I've got my user table here. And if you haven't seen the authentication video yet, check that out. It'll walk you through the process of setting up a workspace that's designed to have an authorized user. But with that authorized user table structure, I've added a new column called role. In this case, it's an enum column. So what I've done is press plus there on column, given it a name, and then selected the values that are allowed. So admin, member, and guest are some typical roles that you would see. Of course, I've already got this column, so I'm not going to save it. I'm just going to X out here. This enum value with these different roles allows us to go in and change what someone's role is right here on the database. Or as we add users, we can assign them a role. So I'll go ahead and delete this user here and we'll re-add them later. Now that we've got a role for each of our users, we're gonna go ahead and set up some endpoints. So I like to right click on API and open it in a new tab because it's easy to go back and forth. So here's my API groups and I'm gonna come down to example. You're gonna see in our first method, we're going to check a user's role using the get record function. And in the extras method, we're gonna do that by storing the user's role in the authorization token itself with json.extras. So let's begin with our first method. What you can see here is I am requiring the user to be authorized before they can uh, access the rest of the endpoint. And the way that I do that is click up here by default, it's disabled, but I've selected user authentication. And what that will do is when I run and debug, I'll need to provide an auth token in order for the endpoint to be run. If I just ran it right now, it would say this field is required. And all that means is I click this magnifying glass and select a user to be the authorized user in this case. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this authorized user and we're gonna go look them up with a get record. To create that get record, we're just going to do a plus database request get record, select the user table, and the field that we're going to look for is the ID, which is the selection we get by default, but we're going to match the field value to auth ID. So we're going to get the ID of this authorized user and return it. Now, of course, we've already got that here with this function that I've added. And I've added a stop and debug so we can check that value. To do that, you can just press plus the utility function and then stop and debug. And that will allow you to create this stop and debug that we have here where I've selected the variable of user. User is this get record new return. So if you want to see how that works, our get record under output is coming back as user. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use the stop and debug to see who that logged user is in the auth token. So I'll go ahead and run this now. And what we can see is there it is. I'm the authorized uh, user, or I could select uh, Michael and run it. And now we'll get Michael back and we can see that his role is member. And so that brings us to the next step. What we want to do is go into the user dot role, which you can learn more about dot notation. Um, in our documentation, we're going to pull up the user dot role and we're going to check if they have the role admin. Now it's really important when you put this information in, if you just were to type user dot role, um, what you'll see is that the variable type up here is text that will cause an error. So it's important to make sure you select the user variable so that it says var any when you set up your precondition. The other thing that you'll want to do is change your error type to access denied. And you can provide a message here. So let's see if Michael has the right permissions or not. There we go. Because Michael is a member, not an admin, we get our access denied with our user friendly message explaining why. If we were to use my account, which is an admin, We'll get past this precondition and then just return a query all records for all of the users, which is pretty easy to add. Just press star database request, query all records and users. 
and it will pull that through. So in this first method, we've gone through how to pull a record from the user, check the role, and then proceed if they have the right permission. But we can also store a user's role in the authorization token itself. We'll go through that now. So I'm just going to publish these changes and go back to my example API group and go into the extras method. Here you can see there's no get record. All it's going to do is go get that token. However, by default, that token doesn't have our role in it. If I were to select a user right now and run it, I wouldn't get any rollback because it hasn't been stored yet. To do that, what I need to do is log in or sign up. So we'll go ahead and look at that now. I'm going to go ahead and open up that API tab again so that we can go back and forth between the authorized endpoints. When you set up your Xano workspace to have authorized users, you get these three um, endpoints set up for you, login, auth me, and sign up. And you'll need to change login and sign up in order to add the ability for a user's role to be used in the authorization token. We'll start with the login process. So in this case, this is a public endpoint because the user is going to log in with their email and their password. So if I were to look at run and debug and say, for example, my email and my password, this will successfully give me an authorization token. But what's happened is, in addition to checking if I'm a valid user and if my password's correct, I've added something to JSON extras. So this is what it will typically look like when you first set up your workspace with an authenticated user. But you can go under here in extras, click set. I can say, I'm going to set the key to be role. And then I'm going to find the user and use dot notation to grab their role. And now I can store the role in this auth token. So again, I'll go ahead and rerun this. I'll get a fresh auth token. And now I'm going to come back to my extras method, run and debug. But instead of selecting one of these fake tokens here, I'm going to provide my logged in users token there and run it. And we'll see that it works. I'm recognized as an administrator. If I were to pick another user, say if I was to pick Chris, who's a guest, and grab this authorized token and bring it over to my extras method, put it into the auth token under run and debug and run it. Now I would get that expected access denied message. One thing that's important to do when you're putting a user in uh, with their user role is we need to make sure the user role is in the record that we get back from the database. So this get record from user by default won't have the role. So when you first set up your authenticated user in your workspace, it'll just be e name, email, and password. You'll need to go in, customize, and select role to add role to what's returned for the user so that you can then reference it here in the extras. You'll also need to do that for the sign up process. So if I wanted to sign up a new user, we're going to need to make some changes here as well. So by default, name, email, and password are provided when you sign up a user. But you'll also want to be able to assign the role that they have. Um, and you can do things like give them a default role. So what you can see here is I've added a conditional that says, if when a user signed up, the role is empty. So there's my input enum role. And then I've added a filter called is empty. So if a role isn't provided, so if role is empty equals true, then I'm going to go ahead and just assign the role of this user to member by default. And the way that I do that is I create a variable called assign role, role, and then I update that value to member. So by default, if a role has been provided, that will be the assigned role. But if not, I'll give them the assigned role member. And then when I add that user into my database, 
I'm going to make sure that that role has been set to the assigned role. So that's one way that you can set it up that users can sign up. And if for whatever reason, a role hasn't been provided, you give them a default level of permission like guest or member or something else that you might select. Again, it's important once you've got this user record that you update your authentication token with the user role. And so you're going to need to, again, customize the input here and make sure that role has been selected. Once you have user.role available to you, you can go into extras and set that role to the user.role. And again, just make sure that when you're doing it, you're selecting user here so that that says var any, and you'll be good to go. So now I'm going to sign up a new user. And this user can just be Ben. And let's give Ben admin control. Great. So now I've got my auth token. If I want to check that auth token against my extras method, I can do so right here. And there we are. Ben has the ability to access this information. Here's something that's different about the get record method and the extras method. If I were to go into my database and refresh my results, and here you can see Ben has admin access, but let's say I, that was a mistake. I actually want Ben to have member level access. If I came back to my extras method and I reran it, Ben would still have admin access because his logged in authorization token has role as admin. So I would need to make sure to rerun login with Ben's credentials to get a new token that has the correct role. So that's something to think about as you're designing, if you use extras, that if you're going to change a user's role at the database level, you want to make sure that that user has to re-log in. Pretty rare thing, but important to, to note so that you really understand the difference between accessing the database record and using the auth token. And so here's our updated auth token. And when I run it, Ben no longer has permission. Hopefully you found that helpful in terms of understanding role-based access controls and uh, feel free to use this snippet as a way to get started.